Welcome to the Bioshock Infinite Combat video. Here we're in the middle of the game, and we're showing off Shock Jockey with Murder of Crows. You can see how the crows become electrified when you use Shock Jockey along with it. Pretty awesome. Using the hand cannon. This fellow, for some reason, is taking a long time to die. He's a heavy with a rocket launcher, so they're annoying. And uh, here you see me actually about to throw a Devil's Kiss under this oil spill, which actually isn't there yet, but I have Elizabeth pop it in and this guy burns, which is pretty fun. I'm planning to charge this guy off the ledge, but he died instantly. So I'm getting pretty low on health here. I have to take out this guy, so I'm going to switch to my Last Man Standing gear, which gives you uh, health when you kill somebody when you're low on health. The gear's randomized in the game, so you may or may not find it, but I did, which is handy. And very low on health, killing an enemy gives health, so I'm going to try and snipe this guy up here to refill my hit points. And boom, I got about 50% of my health back. Pretty sweet. Here we're going to show off Undertow plus Shock Jockey. Charge it, pull somebody in, nice and close. Zap him with a Shock Jockey, and boom! He is down. Hip firing with the sniper rifle, I have the upgrade. This is the same spot, I'm just reloaded to try out a few different things. Turn to Sender is one of my favorite Vickers, really handy. Here it's absorbing all the incoming fire, then I can throw it back at the enemies. Here a nice bucking bronco with, I believe, a charge. And here we have quite a swarm. I'm trying out possession plus shock jockey. That crow missed because he teleported, so I just do another. And welcome to a giant electrical storm. I also have this storm gear enabled, so I'm killing guys. It's transmitting the effects to nearby enemies, which is really handy for large groups of foes. Critical hits with the hand cannon are awesome. Here we have some heavy hitters with hail fires, but my sniper rifle makes quick work of them. You see again the sniper rifle rate of fire upgrade at work, allowing you to fire very quickly. Devil's Kiss plus Charge explodes enemies quite nicely. Thought I'd use that freight hook, but I don't. Instead, go over here, hold the charge vigor down for a much bigger charge, it will instantly kill lesser enemies. So here you can actually use possession on vending machines to give you money. You notice it will use a lot of your salts, but since you're in a vending machine you can just buy some salts back if you really want, but generally speaking there's almost always salts laying around and you can see over there there is in fact some salts so I'm not afraid to use all up my uh, salts on the possession because I'm going to get it back. And here we have a crank gun. Crank guns are awesome. Pretty much crank gun plus everything. So again, repeat scenario, but this is one of the best spots to show this off. This is just awesome. Look at this. Chewing through guys. The only problem with the crank gun is it's Rate of fire is great, but it also burns through your ammo very quickly, but makes up for it with the damage. Shock Jockey is probably my favorite. Vigor works great with just about anything, stuns them, allows you to get easy critical hits in. Nice undertow to shotgun blast, it's pretty nasty too. So here you have a nice skyline, jump to skyline, jump to skyline, and bash. Nice bucking bronco. Notice they didn't actually kill him right away, but it did knock him off the map. This guy was going to melee me, so I bucking bronco to him. Go ahead. Okay. Here, this is towards the end of the game on Gonstock's ship. This is a great way to get rid of turrets. Shock jockey plus a hand cannon or a sniper rifle makes pretty short work of them. Here I also have Rising Bloodlust on, so anytime I get a kill, I get a damage stack of damage for whatever weapon, which is nice. Critical shock shocky hits can search their body before it's even over. You can see I have a uh, high amount of assaults through upgrades. Shard's shotgun blast always takes care of most anyone. 
These turrets are going to town on me. I'm trying to take cover. Trying to summon a mosquito. That doesn't work. It's these two these two guys, and here you will see the Storm Gear at work momentarily. I kill this fellow, and the effect chains to the next guy. We saw that earlier. And here we are seeing the continuation of me killing turrets. The Shock Chucky does work from this distance, and again the hand cannon making very short work of these turrets. Two shots, so I down the sights with Bloodlust. One of the best ways to do it alternately, you can also use possession or a heavier weapon like a rocket launcher, but the hand cannon is amazing. Especially once you get the reload speed upgrade, which you see active here. Here we're going to have some more fun with possession plus Devil's Kiss. Earlier we saw possession plus Shock Jockey. Here it creates a firestorm. Fortunately they moved out of position, but still had fun with it. And we're going to see the effects the, once the enemy is finished possession, they will commit suicide. So you see here, him blowing himself away with a machine gun. For some reason this guy didn't notice. Finish him off. This is definitely one of the most intense parts of the game. Very, very heavy combat. A lot of different foes. The carbine's pretty nice. Has a good range. Good damage. Pretty fast rate of fire. Here you see me again using Last Man Standing. I'm nearly dead, but scoring kills gives me help. You can, if you want, pause any time on your gear and change it, which is handy if you're about to die, like you saw me do that earlier. Here we have some Rocketeers coming in, some Patriots. I don't really have the right weapons for this section, particularly, but I do well enough. Especially once I start using Return to Sender, which gives me a damage block that I need to finish these guys off. The Quick Burst just gives you a temporary shield. Holding it down absorbs the damage. It's really quite easy. Small amount of vigor to just use the temporary shield. Here you see me trying to take out a Patriot on this ship, doing some decent damage. And this is a heavy, and I have a machine gun and a carbine, and neither of these weapons particularly do that much damage to this foe. You want a shotgun, a hand cannon, sniper rifle, it takes me quite a while to work him down. Burning through clips of ammo. And finally, I do have some melee a melee execution gear on when I do melee kills. Here you see me gruesomely executing him. I regain a large chunk of health. Also handy, managing your gear to regain health is pretty critical. I am playing on hard, so it's even more vital. Enemies have quite a lot of hit points. Here again you see me meleeing and upon killing gain more health. Especially important taking on these Iron Patriots or whatever they're called. And uh, here you see me switching to a much needed shotgun to take on this Patriot. Shock Jockey is always great, especially upgraded stun duration. And Patriots take more damage from the back. You see me getting critical hits here, so always try and fight them from the back. Elizabeth, ever handy with the salts. Patriot, finally. Nope, oh, doesn't go down yet. There we go. I want his crank gun to take out this other Patriot. See me here returning to finish off this Patriot. Return to sender, absorbing its initial burst. Winding up. Crank gun in action is beautiful to behold. So much fun. Unfortunately, there's no upgrades for that, but that's okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget, there's also Clash in the Clouds DLC out for anyone wanting those challenge maps. Enjoy!